Hi there, this is Rachel Baxter, and I'm going to share a message with you that the Lord gave to me, um, really that he's just been placing on my heart, reminding me of from a number of years ago. And so the last couple of nights as I lay in bed and just in prayer, I feel like the Lord continues to, to remind me of this and that it's just the right time to be releasing this. Um, and again, it's related to Iran. So when... When I received this April 14th of 2015, it was a closed vision. And so I would tell you at that time, I couldn't have even found Iran on a map. Apart from knowing that it was in the Middle East, I really, you know, I knew nothing about Iran. And so this is just what the Lord showed me. And, and the, the headlines, even just this week, okay, related to Iran, um, last week, you know, we, or maybe in the last two weeks, we learned that Israel or Israel in America or someone killed their top leading nuclear scientist. So that nuclear theme, keep in mind. And, um, I think it was last week that the Lord gave me a dream about what was going to happen, um, related to Iran. And in that dream that I shared on a video like this, I talked to you about, you know, that it was some kind of a nuclear explosion that had happened in an American city and the impact of that as I experienced it in my dream. So and another data point, um, before November 1st of this year, before the election, the Lord spoke to me about Iran. So there's just this theme. So this week we, um, we learned that the leader of Iran, uh, I can't pronounce his name, Khomeini, is that right? Um, he passed away. So um, they're in the process of determining a new leader. So the leader of Iran, who's been the leader for years, passed away. Also this week, they are experiencing record flooding. There is just crazy flooding. And it was that headline yesterday that just I saw uh, as I was uh, you know, looking at uh, just videos and for some reason it popped up related to this major flood in that was impacting Boucher, Iran. So it's a place called Boucher. And that caught my attention because in this word I'm going to share with you from, in this experience, it was a, a closed vision. And then what the Lord spoke to me about, um, it was about Boucher, Iran. Okay. So just keep in mind all those things, you know, what's happening in our world and the, with, um, internal to America, the unrest that's happening, um, the pandemic we're in, the vaccine operation warp speed that's getting ready to be rolled out, uh, reports already in countries of major, um, vaccine reactions and warnings and all of that. Okay. And then I just want to share, I hold a biblical worldview. I didn't always. So when I, when I came into relationship with Christ again in 2014 and I became spirit filled, the Lord, he began to do a work in me to change everything that I see. Everything that I look at, everything in my life, my heart is to see it through God's eyes, through the eyes of what the Bible says, not through what the world says, okay? And so one of those key tenets in the Bible, I'm going to preach a second because this is important and I see this everywhere right now. It's all around us, is that the, if you recognize there is, there is Satan, he's a, he's a fallen angel, he chose to fall, he, he, he wanted to be God himself, he was, you know, the Lord, he, he fell. The Lord kicked him out of heaven, kicked him out. And he took a third of the angels with him. That's the story of, you know, our creation. I believe that God created our earth in six days and on the seventh day rested. I believe that. I believe it's only been 6,000 years since our earth was created. Those are things I believe, okay? And I believe those are biblical things. And so I see through those eyes. So Satan, he's he hates us. He's jealous of us as God's creation, as the sons of God. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy us. And so now, you know, pandemic comes along, uh, you know, people sick, people dying. That's not God's heart. That's Satan's heart. Okay. And this, this vaccine that, that we know is going to cause harm, even if it does good, even if there is good, it does in the process, we know it's going to cause harm. That's Satan's heart. That's not God's heart. Okay. So again, everything that we see, if we look th through the eyes of God who loves us, who wants to see us prosper, who had a who has a plan for salvation to bring us back to himself in his kingdom is only health and life and love. And then you have the kingdom of this broken world. So in the Bible, it says that this kingdom belongs to Satan right now. Now, Jesus died and rose again and took the keys of hell back. And so he gave them to us. 
Okay. He gave us the authority just as Adam had given it back over. Jesus took it back and he gave it to us. Okay. So all of that is important because this is what I see. There is so much deception and Satan is the God little G of deception. And so he is working so hard right now to bring through deception, to bring division, husband and wife, father and mother, children and parents, all of it, neighbor to neighbor. He is working to bring division. So I, all of that just as context, because the Lord is showing us five and a half years ago, the Lord gave me this. He, he, why does he do that? Because he, it's so that we would believe so that people would read this and go, oh my gosh, this is happening. Could the Bible be true? Could God really speak to us? Yes. There's nothing special in me. Okay. I'm just a, I just love the Lord. He's done a work in me. That's it. He wants every one of us to hear his voice. Okay. So he began speaking to me. This is his work. I get absolutely no value from this. And I don't, if I'm wrong, I don't care if I'm wrong. I mean, I care about people, but my value doesn't come from whether I get this right. I'm obedient. I feel like I heard from the Lord. I wrote it down. I'm sharing it again. And it, I get no value. In other words, that this isn't, oh, I, oh my gosh, this is exciting to see that, you know, what I heard is coming true. No, that is not what this is about. This is about the Lord saying, this is what's going to happen because it, it, as he speaks, he, he warns us and then he gives us his promises. And so in this word are his promises of it for, for his ch children. If you are a child of God, that means you've accepted Jesus as your savior and you don't continue to go on sinning. You're turning from wicked ways. You're choosing to follow him. You're becoming a disciple of him, growing and growing, not perfect. We're never going to get there, but we grow and grow, right? And so the fruit of our life as followers of Jesus is that our lives begin to produce the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. If we don't have those in our life, we're not children of God. Okay. You can say that you're a Christian and never choose to follow Jesus. It's the following and having your life given to him. He is our Lord. He is my Lord. And what that means as my Lord and Savior means that I'm not in control anymore. I've surrendered my life. I choose to live under his authority. What is his authority? It's in his word. It, he tells us how to live. I told you I was going to preach a minute. Okay, I'm done. I needed to say that. That's the context of this. Why, why do we care? Because God wants us to know what's going to happen. And he's going to make a way to protect us through these things that are coming upon the earth in the time before Jesus returns again, in the time, this, this time of Jacob's trouble, the time of the birth pains that we're in, the beginning of the tribulation that's soon to come, I believe. Okay, here's what it was. So in this closed vision, so in a closed vision, my eyes were closed and this whole scene played out in front of me with my eyes closed but it wasn't from my own imagination. I wasn't like, ah, I want to think about this. It was like this, this thing dropped into my mind and my heart. Okay. I saw Jesus usher, th usher me through a white threshold into a great expanse. First, I looked to the left and I saw a scene taking place behind a wall where smoke was rising. There had been a major explosion. So massive, it reminded me of a mushroom cloud. So there's that explosion. I heard Holy Spirit spoke to me. He heard, spoke these words, death, destruction, embitterment, chaos, disorder, death, destruction, embitterment, chaos, disorder. And then he spoke a word, the, a word that I didn't know what it was, never heard it before. I heard Kayed, Kayed. Okay. I heard it. I didn't see it. So I didn't know how it was spelled. And so I, after this experience ended, I looked this up. Okay. So here's what I learned about Kayed. When these are kind of various definitions, when a smoking pipe's contents have been reduced to complete ash, it is said to be Kayed. When a smoking pipe's contents have been reduced to complete ash, it's said to be Kayed. So here there's something re relating to fire because you need fire to have smoke and ash. Okay. And then in the Arabic language, the word Kayed means commander or leader. Okay. So at the same time that I, I had this experience, the Lord put Damascus into my heart, into my mind. So these are just pieces of a puzzle. Okay. And that's the Lord does this because we see in part, I'm not God. I have to rely fully on the Lord and Holy Spirit and Jesus working in my life to understand anything. He is the source of all wisdom. I, have, I bring nothing to the table. So Damascus, if you don't know, is the capital city of Syria. I think I knew that at this point. 
And then I heard, I ran. So I, these are the things I heard. Death, destruction, embitter, embitterment, chaos, disorder, Kayed, Damascus, I ran. Okay. So then in that, it was like the Lord dropped an understanding in my heart related to, I felt led to understand that there will be a shaking, the shaking or explosion that I saw behind the wall would impact the, the Bushir nuclear power plant. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know anything about Bushir, a nuclear power plant in Iran, where it was at the time. The Lord dropped this understanding in my heart. Okay. So I just want to say that again. I don't know that that means that the explosion has to be at Boucher, that that's where it is, but it, it, this explosion impacts Boucher nuclear power plant. So whether that's the source of it or somehow the nuclear power plant in Boucher is related to the explosion that I saw. So I found out later that, that there is a nuclear power plant in Boucher. It's in Southwest Iran. Um, and it was built in 2013 and it, it um, produces power for Iran. And it also, the nuclear, the spent nuclear material is what's used in the production of enriching uranium. Okay. Okay. There, interestingly, as I searched out Kayed in Iran, I found that there were five Iranian cities named Kayed, Q-A-E-D. One of them is located in the Bushir province in southwestern Iran, very close to Bushir into the nuclear power plant. Okay, so that was the end of the understanding that I got. Okay, with that. So I could speculate, but I'm not gonna speculate. Um, after I looked left, so keep in mind, this is all a part of a vision, a closed vision I'm having. So I looked left, I saw the explosion, I heard all those things. Okay, after that, then the Lord spoke to me and said Psalm 53. So I looked it up when, it, when this was all over, I looked up 53. This is what Psalm 53 says. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand and who seek God. Everyone is turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on God. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread, where there was nothing to dread. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. You put them to shame for God despised them. Oh, that salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. So um, in the sake of this, this video, I, I'm just, I could just talk about that. I could talk about a lot of that, but I ask that you would study that out. Um, it, that speaks a lot, speaks volumes. And then in the vision, I looked straight ahead of me. And I saw a picture of another wall and a gate. I saw a crown of gold behind the gate, and I knew that it was Jerusalem. Then I heard Leviticus 26, 1 through 13. Okay, and so I'm going to read that again quickly. But so I had looked left. I saw this explosion. You know, it's this what what is coming, right? It had to do with this uh, destruction, disorder, leader, ash, um, you know, smoking pipe. Um, all that. Okay. And then I looked straight ahead and I saw a crown of gold behind the gate and knew that it was Jerusalem. This is what the Lord. So here's the promises of God. So in the last, he, he led me to Psalm 53. We heard all about the wicked, right? The wicked who do not even know him. They don't even know there's a God. Then this speaks about the promises. So he, this is what the Lord says. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season. And the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest and the grape harvest will continue until planting. And you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your land. I will grant you peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you have, have to move it to make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you and I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God. Sorry, I got to turn my page. Who brought you out of Egypt. 
so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. In the vision, so that was Leviticus 26, 3 through 13. So in the vision, I then looked to the right. Okay, so I looked to the left, I looked in the center, and then I looked to the right. And I saw a third wall. Behind the wall was a huge tree. I knew this tree was the tree of life. It represented protection and provision. I knew there was good fruit in the tree. It was meant to be a covering for God's people. I felt like God was showing me that if that it was a safe haven for his children. And then the Lord spoke to me and led me to 1 John 3 and Matthew 6. I felt like God was saying with these, these scriptures that these were his instructions and his promises to his children. And so... So very quickly, I want to look at that and just pull out a couple themes. And then I would just, again, I'd ask you to study that out. So in 1 John 3, And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. Jesus is coming soon. And before him, a lot of things are going to happen. We need to keep our eyes on him. And if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. <sighs> we see a lot of that. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or or known him truly. And I know that to be true in my life before really, beyond just going to church and going through the motions, you know, I was born and raised a Lutheran in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, went to church. Uh, my mom's always been an organist. You know, it all looks good. We're doing the right things. But in my heart, my heart was not changed. And when I truly became spiritual, filled by the Holy Spirit and convicted of my sin, my life began to change. That's my testimony. That's what I know. I, I no longer wanted to continue in my sin because I had seen him and known him. Back to, to verse 7. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. All right, so in the sake of time, I'm not going to go on, but there's more to that. You can continue on at verse 11. So we're not perfect as Christians, but... As followers of Jesus, who was the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way apart from him. We follow him and we turn away from sin. And so there's an invitation. We are getting closer and closer to the time when Jesus will return and there will be no more time. The time will have come. The time will have gone. The time will have passed. And either we are following Jesus and we are his children or we are the, the children of Satan. There is no in-between. There is no gray area. Well, I just want to live in the gray area. I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to. No, it is not about what I want. It is about following the Lord. It is about following God. It's about laying down my life. It is not about being quiet and being passive or passive aggressive. It's about loving people first because that's a fruit of who we are as children of God. But it absolutely is about truth and discernment and wisdom. And it's all, this is my little, my little Bible here, my little travel one. It's about the word of God. What does the word of God say on any matter? And that becomes my heart, not my own thinking. When you see people walking in unrighteousness, that is not God's heart. And if, and God's an, giving an invitation at moment by moment, turn from your wicked ways and follow me. And Jesus died, Jesus died for every single one of us, but we choose. He'll, God will never force himself on us. We choose to follow him or we don't. 
Okay, and then in Matthew 6, you're going to see a, a, a theme here a little bit. There's a warning here. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you're, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. He knows our hearts. So we should be doing good. We should be taking care of the needy, but no one needs to know any of that. It's a heart issue. Are we doing things before men? That's why I started this by saying, I don't get any value from this. This is not, this isn't who I am. I'm just a daughter of God. I love him and I'm going to be obedient. But my value doesn't come from what I say or what I, what people think of what I say or what I do. In prayer, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. So he says, go into your prayer closet and, and pray in silent and pray according to the way Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's prayer. Fasting, how do we fast? And then treasures in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. This is verse 19. Where moss and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moss and vermins do not draw, destroy and where thieves do not break and steal. So are we are we about building the kingdom of God on this earth or are we about building our own kingdoms on this earth? Um, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear is not life more than food in the body, more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet heaven, the heavenly father feeds them. And are you not much more valuable than they are? Can any of you, by worrying, at a single hour to your life? So, so I think I'm going to stop there. So the, he's just, he's saying, like, what does it look like to live in righteousness, to follow the ways of God? These, you know, God's word tells us, Jesus says, this is what it's going to look like. And it's, it's all available to us, but we've got to take the time to, we've got to take the time to read it, right? And get it into our hearts and choose to follow it. And so, okay, um, I think I'm going to stop there. And so, um... There are things that are happening, we're seeing. So the Lord's pointing me to this. There, there are parts I really believe of this that are being fulfilled in terms of the leader, in terms of, you know, the leader passing away, in terms of, um, you know, Damascus has been struck over and over again. There's a prophecy in Isaiah 17 that says it will become a ruinous heap. And, um, you know, there's another word the Lord gave me in October of 2015, which I'm just not going to take the time to read, but I will put that in the, the comments, uh, as a link in, in below in the explanation where the Lord says to me uh, related to Iran, he says, this is what the Lord said. Damascus will be hit first. Then Iran will shake. I will cause the waters to pull back from the shores and to advance on the land with such fury that no eye has seen the heights. The water will rise to, I will lay waste to every scheme of the enemy of my people. And so when I saw the flooding in Iran, I saw pictures of the water covering the, the land of Iran and, Bo and specifically Boucher. That's what stirred this in my heart and to share this with you again. And so I don't believe we've seen that yet. We're going to know when we see that very specifically. But we're just in that season. These things are being fulfilled. And that just the things the Lord spoke to me about five or six years ago. But the things people have been speaking, that God has been speaking to so many people. And there's a there's a theme. It's a theme of warning. It's it's just like John the Baptist said, and Jesus, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is. It's close. And we can choose to partner with the kingdom of God right now on this earth today. Where are our hearts aligned? Are we listening? Are we making time to pray? Are we in God's word? Are we in our prayer closets? Just listening to what the Lord has to say, the instructions he has to give us moment by moment. All right. Thank you guys. Bless you.